Hey everybody, so this is Jonathan Moore back here again with part two of Lights Fort as promised uh, for the Historic Preservation Trust of Lebanon County. Uh, in the end part of the video, we'll be going back to Lights Fort uh, with Jan uh, in the northern part of the build building, and she'll be talking a little bit more about um, what their needs are, what they're trying to do. Uh, some interesting little tidbits here and there, some bottles and some cool stuff that's in there. And uh, sort of what their, I think some of their hopes are there as well. Uh, but this first part of the video, we're actually going to go through, uh, it's a Lebtown article by Randy J that talks, uh, really goes into uh, the history and the uses of Lights Fort, sort of the mysteries around that building. Uh, because of it so being so old, it's coming up on 300 years, you know, it's 280-ish right now. Um, so we know that the date that it was it was built, 1742, but let's talk and delve a little bit further into it. And then we'll also talk about some of the little stories that are surrounding it, the tunnels, some of those things. And then we'll talk a little bit, too, as well, what we saw in the videos of the present state of the building. And some of those hopes will reiterate those. So enjoy the rest of the video. So here's what we know delving into the history. What we're looking at right here is the original land deed grant uh, to John Light or Johannes Light. And uh, so basically it was around 1720. This is the general region of when the Europeans would have started settling in that area. Now, the founder of Lebanon, George Stites, it was originally called Stitestown. He was around 1738, and he had, I believe it was about 365 acres. And now we visited the Chestnut Street Log House. That would have been what primarily the houses would have looked like. Every now and then, though, you had one of these stone houses. Now, in 1742, that's when Johannes Peter Light, he wound up coming into the area. He got 205 acres. And there was all kinds of stuff, which we'll go into, that was on that property. Uh, but he would have been what would have been considered like the northern part of what would become Lebanon, uh, the early Lebanon, if you will. Because I think it originally went from Stitestown to Lebanon Township, and it was sort of competing with Hebron and a couple other little villages of what was going to be the primary town. Eventually, Stitestown won out, or Lebanon Township, and it became, the entire area became known as Lebanon. But uh, back in that period of time, uh, primarily they would have dealt with the Lenape and the Iroquois tribes, and occasionally there would have been disputes, if you will, over sort of hunting grounds, um, territorial encroachment, and those types of things. So that's when you had slight hostilities, even before the French and Indian War, which is what made Lights Fort, this place like that, necessary, and being the fact that it could house about 60 families almost. Uh, and then we'll go into the tunnels, you know, what the purpose of them was. You know, we've gone into that before, but whether they actually did exist. Um, and when we say tunnels, it was technically one tunnel. And you'll see this later in the video where I have a map of where they think it went through. It just sort of split off to the other entrance is because I didn't fully understand. I thought maybe one went out one way, one went out the other way. Well, it would have been east and west, but it was technically just one tunnel. Because uh, Cliff and I had talked about maybe the tunnels didn't actually go into that underground basement, and maybe they went into one of the barns or something of that nature, and that's where the people came out from and then would proceed to go into the fort. But probably a good chance it did come into the basement. So anyways, let's go into some of this history that we want to talk about and uh, explore this further. So once again, let's look at the building. 1742 is when he built this two and a half uh, story structure. Uh, it's known as Lights Fort now. Back then, it would not have been known as that. It was just basically the idea behind it was that it was a homestead. And this is what it would have looked like back in that time period. It had his German style limestone building and then they did this uh, I think it's like a Dutch Dutch roof uh, now this would have included the 205 acre property would include woodlands vegetable gardens farm fields orchards freshwater wells including the one that was underneath the house 
Uh, they had a family cemetery, including technically a second one that the one son took over. They'd have the sheds, stables, uh, corrals, roads, workshops, and a large stockade surrounding the homestead and a barn. Uh, they would have had basically, you had to look at this as almost like an outpost. He was a little bit away from where the rest of the villages were. So this particular homestead, he literally had to have everything that they needed there. Um, and it was, it was built very European style, very thick walls. I believe 24 inch thick walls. They had a center fireplace. Later, they had one that was in the uh, southeast corner of the house, which is where they want to replace because that currently is not there. They removed it, I think. The gentleman said for a bathroom. I think Tim said for a bathroom. But uh, anyways, so this structure, because of the sturdiness of it and how well it was built, uh, it's been utilized first off as the homestead, you know, and also as... Uh, a private fortification, which goes into that whole thing. It was called Light, still called Light's Fort. Was it technically a fort? Which we'll go into. I mean, but we'll go into now because they talk about all these different, you know, fortifications. And it's basically, it's an argument of semantics. Um, for instance, Fort Swatera, Fort Manita, Fort Henry, those, you know, Fort Hunter, those were forts that, the government of Pennsylvania put forth the funding to make them say, like, for instance, Fort Swatter was originally the home of Peter Hedrick. Well, they just basically fortified it. It was, a, it was a, actually, that was a log home. Um, most of them were actual logs, you know, log forts. They just had sort of those, you know, fortifications around the home and made it a little large and those types of things. Um, so actually... In reality, Lights Fort, uh, places like uh, the Isaac Meyer Homestead, um, trying to, there's a couple, I think the one Gloninger for some of those, those were stone, uh, which is why they were refer, referred to. Uh, another one, obviously, as well, Clifford's Zeller's uh, relatives, the Zeller uh, Fort, uh, which is considered the oldest fort, I believe, in Pennsylvania, may even be in North America, I'm not sure, but I know in Pennsylvania. That was originally log became stone. So obviously wood burns. So a number of these people figured out it's more expensive, but in the long run, it's safer. So that's why they went about building these homes and stones. And then ultimately they became fortification. Churches were very commonly uh, like the Bethel Moravian church. Uh, one, a couple that don't get mentioned like Hill Lutheran that was used as a, place of refuge is what they would lights for zellers for those types of ones ones that weren't authorized by the government of pennsylvania and also you would say they didn't routinely have soldiers in them they would be referred to more as places of refuge instead of as a fort if you want to be historically accurate that would be the accuracy there because even like reed's fort it was log structure it was his home uh, but they actually did have soldiers stay there from time to time. And then you have the confusion of Fort Manada, Brown's Fort, and Robinson's Mill Fort, where there was two other forts in that area. And they all sort of refer to them as the same fort, and they're not. Um, but that's sort of, you know, this home served many purposes, besides that fortification and homestead at the very get-go. It eventually would wind up becoming a Mennonite house of worship, a community meeting place. Uh, it was also a grain storage facility. I believe it was a grain storage facility during the Union Canal days. So that would have been probably in the general re region of 1830s to about 1880s. It was probably some kind of food storage. It also makes sense because once again, we were down in that cellar, great place to store food. Uh, but they did, they made some changes on the southern face, I believe, of the the home where they had a grain uh, like pulley system to like pull the bags or whatever they were doing up to the upper floor. Uh, it also got used as a distillery. We talked about in the video, the first part, 
uh, beverage distributor that was much later and also throughout as apartments. And one of the videos we're going to be hitting on is when we do the Daniel Jones video from Mount Nebo Cemetery. His son, I believe it was Owen Jones, he actually, they believe he lived there at Lights Fort because he worked for, at that time, it would have been in the teens of 1910 to 1920 in that region when it was a, a distillery. And he worked for the distillery. So we're going to be filming there again at Lights Fort when we do the Jones video because we want to talk the connection to Lights Fort. But uh, it also apparently was a go-go dance place. So he's talking about the contrast and the uses of the place. Probably more of an underground dance place in the 70s or whatever it was used for. But uh, you go from a Mennonite worship place who were pretty conservative and plain to go-go dancing. Go figure. So that's sort of like what all the uses and uh, the interesting things that this, this place has seen. The stories that it could tell have to be phenomenal. A little scary, too. All right, so another one of these things that I said I'd talk about is the tunnels. This is the basement where the springs are, and we were down there in part one. Um, did they exist? Didn't they exist? If they would have existed, this is where they said they would have gone through either that wall or the other wall. There's an area where you can see there's limestone put there and then just sort of cemented over. Now, the previous owner, I guess claimed that there was an area there that there used to be a door and if you went through that door it went to the tunnel now they also claim the uh, stevens tower uh which is where it's an old folks home now but it was a school back in the day that that's where the one tunnel led to and you could actually access it from their basement another story that i heard is that they were having a lot of flooding problems at the different creeks that went through lebanon so they sort of like the Quiddy was the big one, the Quiddipahela. And they would go in there and they'd cement the entire area. And I said when they did this one area back where the Union Canal had been, and here you see a map of this where it would have went at the top of the map is where Lights Fort is. And then it goes down and that's where the first dot is there. That's where Stevens Tower is. And then where it goes east that's the one where it goes to 8th Street and Cumberland. These were areas that were heavy, not heavily populated, but well populated. So the citizens in French and Indian War period, when there was an attack, they would enter one of those tunnel entrances and it would take them straight to the Lights Fort basement for their protection. It actually makes sense, but they said when they did these creeks thing where they cemented it in, right near where the Union Canal had been, it would only be probably about maybe a block or so from block south from Lights Fort. They cut right through the tunnel. So the tunnel does exist, uh, but they haven't done any archaeological digs or anything yet to prove that they are there. Um, it's mainly just hearsay. But like I said, it does make sense that those places would have existed and it would have been something that was needed given the time period. Uh, and the needs of the local citizenry. Um, but part of the reason they haven't messed with it is like the uh, tour guide explained in part one, I guess they were storing cars over the top of the thing and they sort of fell down through. It's more, I think, a question of is it necessary to put that structure through any more um, possibly incursions that would destroy the structural value of the of, of that particular part of the building so you have to question if you would do that would it wind out impacting that in a degree that it would just the whole thing would collapse so i think that's what a lot of the everybody's interested everybody wants to but when you equate the value of the discovery which everybody's pretty sure they're there to whether or not it's actually needed the cons outweigh the pros. So that's just sort of what it is. But this is, I wanted to give you this map so you can see exactly where this tunnel would have gone. All right, so another part of Light's Fort history that I want to talk about are the legends and the lore. Uh, so the first one that's commonly told, now once again, whether this is true or not, 
but it does make sense um, that if, you know, it's pretty brutal, but it, it makes sense for the time. Uh, the Native Americans at that time would have been searching for any way they possibly could, especially with these stone structures that were basically impossible to break into, um, impossible to burn in a lot of ways. They would look for more devious methods of, of gaining access, if you will, or getting them to come out. So Marcella, who was the daughter of John Light, she found this little Native American girl who was who seemed to be struggling and hadn't eaten and took her in, fed her. And the odd thing was when she went through the little girl's articles when the little girl wasn't watching, the little girl had claimed she couldn't start a fire or anything like that, she, which she thought was weird. But when she went through her thing, she found like a fire starter kick, which would have been like flint or something along those lines to be able to start a fire. So she told her father about it, and her father said, just make sure you watch her. So she was watching her overnight, and she saw a little girl sneak out of bed and follow her to the barn. And the barn would have been one of those essential outbuildings that they would have had on the proper grounds of the homestead. And she caught the little girl trying to light a fire to basically light the place on fire. So she tied her up, she told her father, her father handed her a knife and said, you got to finish this, I'm sorry. He brought her into the home, and so she killed her. They found, I guess like it made a day and a half, two days later, they found the war party camp that had been abandoned. So I guess when they realized this plan wasn't going to work, when the, the uh, barn hadn't been lit on fire, they just went away and accepted their losses. But uh, So a ghost story goes with that, that, that sometimes when you're on the property at night, you'll see this little Native American girl wandering around the property. They also say that you'll see a guy in colonial, like Revolutionary War garb, uh, sort of walking around the property. And I know when the people said that they were working on Lights Fort, there were times they were up on a ladder and they felt like this cold, tingly feeling on their back that somebody was there watching them and they just sort of got unnerved. So how much of those stories are true or not, I don't know. Uh, one of the other urban myths, legends beyond the tunnels is that this place got used during the Underground Railroad, which once again, it would have made sense. Uh, just because having that basement, it would have been a cold place to stay, but it would have been a great place on moving uh, escaped slaves nor northwards. And, uh, and with the connection as well to the Jones family, much later, uh, would have been about 50 years later. It's, it wouldn't have shocked me. Um, it, just, it would have been a great location. It would have been a very noticeable location along the path to say... That's where I got to go. So um, a lot of cool little urban myths and legends that go with that place and haunted stories. Uh, it has quite a history, so it's not shocking. It's got a lot of cool stories that come with it. And uh, like I said, as before, it's a great place to visit. It's so much history of Lebanon right there uh, and over so many eras of American history, which is makes it even cooler. But... Uh, yeah, that's Lights Fort, and that's sort of the lore and the legends that come with it. So something I wanted to talk to you about is now present-day Lights Fort. So as we go inside, as you guys saw that, it really, the outside had been very well taken care of. They actually remortared everything. They just got a new roof put on it. Uh, new windows are next. Uh, but they want to replace those floor beams uh, on the second floor, and it would also be in the attic area because those are badly rotted out. Uh, they also have the stone, apparently, for that second floor and half floor attic. Uh, they have them stored somewhere. I don't know if they're the original stone, but they're the same type of stone. So at some point, they would like to take it back to the original structure. The original structure also would have had clay tile roof. Um, they'd like to take it back to that point as well. Uh, it's just, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of money. Um, so it's one of those things that's going to take time. Uh, they would like to take it back because it would have had an original winding stair as well. That was sort of the European uh, thing. It was, it was partially to save space, 
but it also would have been if you got under attack. It's a lot easier to defend a winding stair than to defend a traditional staircase. Uh, the fireplace is one of the next things they want to do. There was They would have had originally a fireplace in the very middle of the home. That was a traditional Germanic way to build those homes. Now, they put one a much nicer, which they have all the stone for, in the corner that got pulled out for when they put a bathroom in for the apartments. They'd like to put that back as well and try to take it back as traditionally as possible. And one of the things that they did note, it'd be very hard to put this place on the historic registry of, of historic places, whether, you know, U.S. or whatever, because there's so many changes, if you will. But it, it's what they have to do at this stage. It's, it's, it's a miracle the place is still standing. So, unfortunately, it wouldn't get those protections, but it also is protected via the fact that the Historic Preservation Trust of Lebanon County owns it. So it's in no danger there, but they would like to have things like festivals. And because of this building having so many uses... Over the years, you could have French and Indian War Days, you know, Revolutionary War Days. You could have Union Canal Days. You could have, like, for World War One, World War Two, and its uses then. So this could really be a cultural center that could be used to show people what this place actually had seen throughout its time being there in Lebanon. It is the oldest uh, standing structure in Lebanon County, in Lebanon City. Uh, well worth to check out, and uh, once again, I'll have the links for the Preservation Trust uh, of Lebanon County. Uh, well worth checking out their link, and if you can, potentially support them. <laughs> so, but uh, these are old. Was, it, was there a bottle down here? These are oh, these used, these are lights clean up. Oh wow! From a oh of oh, one of the businesses that was here. No, it was a because it was light. There was a hardware store, and I don't remember the I can as far as where it was <laughs> that they sold this used used lights clean up. And sometimes we had these cleaned up for sale, but unfortunately, I don't have them today that they are there. But. What I will do is get that information, just some history of that for you too, anyhow then. So, oh, nice. But uh, someone in the Lights family kind of was cleaning out the house and uh, gave well, these to oh, us. Oh, so they weren't yeah. down here? No, it was oh, okay. not at this, the, the, it was not at this location where this type, where this cleaner was thing sold. is like really, was, really Yeah, neat. that old cart is like something from a railroad or, right? you know, it's got the old yeah. wheels on it anyhow then. Too. Yeah, so they didn't find these bottles actually. No, no, no. Hey, there's a, what walk. is that? Is that that's a bird? Uh, I thought at first it was a rat. Birdie walking through. Yep. It's a birdie? It was a bird, right? Oh, I didn't know that. Huh. Yeah. And they're used to be like a, like a top oh, on here at one point. Be, I, what I hear is, uh, they were used to be hurricane hazel bells. Oh, yeah. Back in the 50s. Okay. Took away a top part of this anyhow then. So, and it's just over the years, they, you know, Sealed it at least anyhow then. So this part here, roof is sealed. Um, and then we have fortunately funds to do a new roof on that corner over there. Okay. So when that, and it's supposed to be getting started next week anyhow then. When that's done, then hopefully we can have this sealed and so the bird, so it's no longer the birdhouse. Yeah. So and at that point, what we're looking to do is See what we can do down below, possibly just getting new flooring down. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been checking it, it was some sawmills, getting some prices to uh, do their, their 3 by 10 by 10 okay. is what we need for floor joists in there anyhow. Then. Yeah. So just slowly, slowly try to get things back. When, and as Jim was saying, like to make it some kind of a... You know, meeting place for organizations to have a really cool function. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because it definitely. I mean, you have you have the capability of doing several different time exactly. periods as yeah. well, and like you could have you know the French and Indian War Days, or you exactly. have, yeah. and you can take it back to like this is what it was like back then, mm -hmm. and just the extraordinary history that and what what this place has seen yes. over, the, over years. the years. If these walls are 
walls could talk, as they say. It was about f- funny <laughs> when he mentioned about it, it like George Washington was only ten years old. It was like, geez, you don't That's think of it like how. The perspective. Of yeah. Yeah. This place has been around. It's seen a lot. Been around. Yeah. 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 So th- thank you once again. You're quite welcome. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. I know you want to get on to the other properties, <laughs> which I appreciate. And uh, if you need what another time here. Feel mm-hmm. free to contact me or, like I said, for the Log House or Monroe Valley Chapel, anytime you want to get into those, yeah. I can make the arrangements. Yeah. I had talked to Tom. I had been there one the time. Okay. I you did. I was doing photography mm-hmm. there. Sure. And Sorry. then we were talking about the place. And he took me in, but that day they had, like, bugs somehow got in there. I was like, I don't really want to step in there and, like, crunch them all over the place. So <laughs> I'll pass this time and we'll figure something oh, out at right. another point. So. Yeah. But. And they usually do a really neat... Christmas or uh, okay, my ahead. dad used when he was alive he used to go there because okay. he I remember when we went by with the schoolhouse and when it was all rubble yeah. and then when they redid it and it's like that it was like wow yeah it was just and my dad used to love to go to those Christmas services because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. it's just such a neat place yeah so it's one of the places I want to do like four seasons from the same angle because yeah. I want to do a photography yes. book because it's just the Monroe Valley that in general it's just, just so beautiful there by itself. yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. Hey. Okay. So here's sort of what we were talking about. Like it used to be across here, but these are some old pictures. They used to have that over the door. And that's what it would have looked like back in the day. So as always, I want to say thank you for coming along, and we will see you all about town.